Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today I thought I would do a at home aesthetic photo tips kind of video because we're all pretty much around the world, which is just crazy. We're all at home, we're in lockdown or quarantine, whatever you were in self isolating mode. Um, I feel like pretty much the whole world is in that place right now. And that doesn't mean that we can't still be creative. And if you are doing Instagram as a job or whether you just do it as a hobby, don't stop doing it because you obviously do it because you really enjoy it. So we can't let stuff like this stop us doing what we actually really enjoy. If anything, use this time to really just like be super creative and challenge yourself. Think outside the box and challenge yourself to make really like aesthetic content that you're really happy with from home. So for once, I've actually written down some notes. Can you believe it? Who is she? I don't know. Um, but I've actually written down some notes just so I didn't forget stuff of at home content ideas that I put in my notes on my phone. Um, so, <laughs> without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first, I'm going to be inserting obviously examples of what I'm talking about here as well, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about because sometimes I don't explain stuff that well. Um, okay, so the first one I have is obviously pretty obvious, but it's mirror selfies. I think when you're doing a mirror selfie, or not even a mirror selfie, a mirror outfit, whatever you're doing in the mirror, like a mirror shot, um, first of all with outfits, try and do, um, you don't obviously have to do this, but in my opinion, the photo will look much better if you do a kind of, not abstract, but a more different pose. So don't just stand there and do like the generic, just, oh, this is me standing in the mirror. I personally think they look a lot more aesthetic and eye-catching if you do a sort of more abstract pose. For example, these ones that I took, this one is obviously the BB pose, I think it's called, with the leg in the air. Um, and then like this one, I do this one quite a lot anyway in photos on the street. I, I call it kind of like my flamingo pose, leg up in the air. Um, but yeah, just do different ones. I do mirror ones, mirror outfits laying down, mirror outfits sitting, mirror outfits standing, but in a cool way. Like there's so many different options you can do. So don't feel like because you're standing in front of a mirror to show off your outfit, that you have to just stand there straight. Like play around, make some shapes, and it will be a much more eye-catching photo. And the same with like mirror selfies. It's kind of, my notes are very, my, my notes are very organized. They kind of all blend into one. So I'm not gonna put these in numbers. This is just a general video on tips that you'll pick up as I talk through them. And um, so yeah, mirror selfies, like actual selfies. Take ones like this, where even though it's technically a mirror selfie, it's actually more focused on the jewelry and my nails. I like these kind of photos, they look really cool. Another one you can do is to, like don't, like, like get a mirror, <laughs> get a mirror that you can move. It doesn't have to be against a wall mirror or like standing mirror. Like you can get a mirror that you can move around, take a little compact, move it around, take your circle mirror that you do your makeup in, move it around, hold it. Uh, who, Yasmin, is it Yasmin that does that? Does that? Hold on, let me just double check because I want to get that wrong. Hold on. I'm pretty sure it's Yasmin Chanel. Who, if you don't follow, by the way, you definitely should because she puts out some really good content that I think you guys would like. But I'm sure you probably follow her already. I'm just checking. Oh, yeah, okay, so like this one, I'll put it on the screen. Let me just take a screenshot now so I don't forget which one I'm showing you. Like this one, for example, she's got someone to hold the mirror. So get your mom dad, brother, sister, to hold the mirror, and you can take this. Um, or, I mean, you could hold the mirror yourself, which I'm sure she did do, but I can't see it right now. Here, she's propped up on a chair. Great example of just being creative. It's a bit like the ones I did on the beach, which was nothing to do with being in isolation. I just wanted to take the mirror to the beach, and I did these pictures. So it's a similar concept, you're just at home. So if your mirror is not in an aesthetic place in your house, don't worry, you can move the mirror to a more aesthetic place. Or even just a plain white wall, which I think looks really, really good. When it's just like plain, kind of negative space, and then you're in the mirror. Sick. Okay, back to notes. I'm going to just stick with selfies for a second, because I feel like they're the most, the easiest 
to do. Um, so I'm going to stick with this category for a second because there's different options in the category. Um, so the next one for selfie is interesting lighting. At the moment in the UK, I don't know what it's like where you are, we've had amazing weather, but it's been super sunny and we've had like the most incredible sunsets. I feel like I've seen a lot of people around the world on my Instagram that have been having these amazing sunsets, so I don't know what that's about, but use it. Golden hour lighting is the bomb and it will just always make a selfie look much better than just like a plain ass selfie in front of a ring light or just natural light that's not golden hour. Examples loads of golden hour try and take one in front of a window so you get these kind of lines because i think they look really sick or like put your blind down or even if you don't have anything on your window and it's just a plain window use something to maybe make some shapes on it you can get like some lace material you can get like a gridded like um like a chair you know that's got like slats in it and you can just prop it up against the window and you would get this kind of light effect coming through there's loads of things you can do with light that make it just so good Okay, I just had to go, I just had to go and do something and now I can't remember what I was saying. So if there's a weird cut here then I'm sorry about that. Um, interesting lighting, did we finish that one? I think we did, right? I think we finished interesting lighting. Um, so another way you can make a selfie look really cool is face masks and eye masks. You guys know that I love the eye mask one. Uh, I haven't done a face mask one in like forever actually to be honest, I feel like I'm overdue one so I might do one of those in a minute, today. And it went like... But, eye mask ones, freaking bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you okay hun? You okay down there Bean? So relatable and ideal for now because the chances are you're going to be masking a hell of a lot. I love eye masks personally, I do them a lot more than um, full masks. Examples that I've done on the screen, um, um, so I think they're just a really cute way to make a selfie look like just really cute and also you can just let your family, friends, followers, whatever you were doing on Instagram, you're just letting them know what your favourite eye masks are right now. So I think it's not only a cool shot, but it's actually an informative shot because you're sharing what masks you like. So I think masks are great and I think you can do some really cool pictures with them. Next up, we're gonna move on to props because props are a massive, massive thing in this situation, in my opinion. A prop can like make a photo just completely different. Um, props, my favorite props are, I have loads. Bottles, like my bottles here that I made, if you didn't see this video, I made all these bottles. I'll leave it in the eye for you so you can watch it. Um, I also used the same technique to make this cup, which I actually used in one of the um, shots with the eye mask on. And it's sick, like it's so nice. You can use any cup, just like a white cup, or in this one I used a gold tea cup. I just think something to hold because when you're at home it's like kind of hard you've got nothing to work with you've got no real location vibes so having a prop to work with is honestly a game changer and your images will be so much better i also have this like coffee mug what's the matter p why are you begging for um flowers they're always great in pictures just to hold great these are faux, faux roses that i just have on my wall but flowers in general but if you've got real ones great but obviously right now it's harder to get those um books like this book this one looks plain white but it actually does have some detailing on it it's really nice and then this one's really nice i like that it's black magazines vogue covers always work great in pictures as props this book, this picture I took, which I think looks really sick. Again, I made the book myself. Um, DIY queen over here. Woo! <laughs> um, but what a great time to be a DIY queen, guys. Like, go on Amazon. Amazon is your friend right now. Amazon has everything we need to be DIY queens. And all of that stuff, so the bottles, the cup, the book, everything you need is pretty much on Amazon for that. In fact, everything. Everything I use to that is from Amazon, so you can do this and it's not expensive, it's a super affordable way to make really cool photos. So go for it, just knock yourself out and be a DIY queen and tag me on Instagram because I want to see that. 
Okay, coffee in general as well. I did coffee shots like this with the, I call it coffee cream, but it's actually called something else like the Gego or something. I call it coffee cream because that's just what I've always called it. Um, make some of that, yeah? Right, that is props, that is eye masks, that is interesting lighting. Okay, the next one is more of an editing one and it's blurry edgy effects. That's what I've written on my notes. Basically, it's just like taking a pretty boring ass photo, but it looks cool because it's blurry and it's got like an edge to it. I did this in this photo here, which I'm actually gonna just show you quickly how I do it. I have shown you before, so if you're not new here, then you will know how to do this because you would have watched, hopefully, my previous kind of editing videos. If you are new here, then I will quickly show you how to do it. Um, so the way I do it is on PixArt. Um, where's PixArt? There. Let me just record my phone screen. I'm just going to record my phone screen and put it here, maybe. Let me just move this further. I'm in the weirdest outfit right now. I've got on joggers. It's not weird. It's actually, it's actually kind of hella cute. I've got joggers, a little top, and a blazer. And um, right, recorded phone screen. Okay, so yeah, I do this on PixArt. Um, I'll show you when it loads. Hopefully the one I did is still going to be here. Mm, that's annoying, I don't think I can. Okay, no worries, I'll just re-import it. Okay, this is the original image. So you can see it already is quite blurry. Why is it blurry? It's blurry because I'm holding my phone, I have ridiculously shaky hands, I'm trying to hold the coffee up, I'm trying to take a picture. It was a, in the moment, I just snapped in, this is what happened. So I'm like this. On this phone cover I've got which is one of the Apple charging ones. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it? Kind of, kind of, yeah. Um, it actually has another button here to take pictures on, which I think is really good. Um, you're not probably gonna have to see that, but that's the button I'm using to press, so I'm like this. And because I've just done it quickly, it's a bit blurry. Yeah, so it's a bit blurry. But I thought, it's a bit blurry, but it would look cooler if it was blurrier. So it doesn't matter that it is a bit blurry already, you could do this if it was crisp as well. So you open the image, you go to effects, down the bottom here, you go to blur, and then the one I use is motion blur. So you put it on and it looks like this. Then I use the rubber <laughs> eraser to erase some bits that maybe I want to keep not so blurred. So I think I erased a bit over this kind of corner, because that's the bit that was a bit less blurry already. And I think I erased a little bit over the shoulder, maybe, like that. So it kept this side very blurry, but it kept the other bit not so blurry. So if you see the before, hold on. So before and after. So it just makes it that extra blurry effect, which I think looks really, really cool. I could have chosen just to make it the coffee was blurred. So like this, for example, which would have also looked very cool. Let me just erase all of that. So say like this. So the coffee is blurry, but everything else, well not the coffee, but this side is blurry, but everything else is as it was. And if this was crisper to begin with, I think that would have looked really cool because you would have definitely got the motion that I'm going like, cheers to the coffee, you know? So a great way, let me just stop recording my phone screen. A great way to make a boring-ish image cool. I'm also going to leave in the eye, well I'll leave in the eye up here now, like um, just my my playlist of Instagram editing tips and stuff, because in that playlist there is actually a video that I did called how to make boring photos cool, and it has lots of tips like this in particular that would work really well at this time in there, so I'll leave that in the eye for you. But that is how I do those ones. And I think it's just a really cool vibe, personally. I really like that kind of vibe. Okay, the next one, and maybe the last one, no, not the last one, the second to last one, is to take photos in your car. We're not allowed to do anything, really. We're not allowed to go out. Doesn't mean you can't go to your car or your garage if you have a garage. Photos in the car are freaking bomb. I took these photos before, and I actually took these ones recently which I think look really, really cool. You can go in the back seat like this, you can go in the front seat like this, you can stand outside the door like this. 
There's so many, you could be in the mirror, in the, another mirror one, in a car, the, what's that called? The bit you flap down and look at your makeup in. Um, love these. I think these look so cool and it takes it away from your house. So if you're just getting so bored of taking content in your house, then obviously this just takes it away from your house and breaks up the feed. Cars, yes, just 100%. Love a car selfie love a car picture in general um, and then lastly would be probably flat lays of some kind or just filler photos and um, you guys know how I feel about filler photos and it's a great time to make your own if you struggle with this kind of thing you can of course use other filler photos from other people as like inspo photos um, you guys know if you're not new I have another Instagram page called 24 inspo which is full of great filler photos. So if you're stuck for a filler photo, check out 24 Inspo. I'll leave the feed on the pic on the screen right now so you can see it. Um, because filler photos is a great, not even great, I feel like it's a, a must at this time because your photos are probably gonna be in the same kind of locations. You just need the filler photos to break it up so your feed doesn't start looking exactly the same. However, if you don't want to use that and you only want to post your own content, by the way, if you do use any of those photos, make sure to tag and credit the images. Wherever I can on 24 Inspo, I will tag who the images are. If it says source unknown, it means I found it on Pinterest. I have no idea who it is. If you know who it is, please do still tag them. Or if I have tagged people and you repost it, don't just tag 24 Inspo, tag the original image as well. That was just like a little disclaimer. Because you should always credit people's work. <laughs> Because there's also people out there that don't, and it's really annoying. Okay, so anyway, if you want to take your own filler photos, the coffee one, I highly recommend. Or tea, cup of tea, coffee picture, just think outside the box on, look at your tea or your coffee, think how can I make this look aesthetic? And for me, like with this one I posted, it just needed some negative space. The coffee spoke for itself, so this worked like perfectly. Um, you can do filler photos as well, like close-up shots. So like, for example, this one, it's, this could be at home. It wasn't actually at home, but it could be just against any wall. But I'm in it, but barely. It really is just about the bottle. So a great filler photo because it's got some negative space. It's going to break up your feed and it's not going to be just like solely about yourself. I'm obviously, this is me talking, if you do Instagram as yourself. Obviously, most videos I make are going to be from a fashion slash beauty lifestyle type vibe. Um, but I feel like a lot of the tips you can apply to other genres. Um, but yeah, they're obviously going to be more for that. But yeah, if you want to take your own kind of flat lay images, then I recommend, again with the props. So like, for example, get a magazine. This one's ridiculously old, but I really like it. And especially Vogue, in fact, they always have so many ads in them. So flip through some of the ads, like, like this page, for example. I just literally opened that on this page. Okay, so you've got this page here. I wouldn't use the girl, but say this page. I don't know if you're going to really... Oh, yeah, there you go. So it's got some detailing down here, which I love, and it's obviously got the Dior in the middle. So you could put your coffee on here. So put your coffee on here. I'll try and do an insert of me, what I'm sh telling you what I mean. Um, but yeah, you could put like your coffee on here, you could put some jewellery on here as well, and you'd get a super cute flat lay filler picture. Where not only is it, peen, not only is it a great filler picture, but it is your picture, and you can show off your favourite jewellery pieces right now. You can show off maybe how you like your coffee, maybe you found a new blend that you love, you can share it on your page. I think you have to remember as well, which I find hard sometimes, we want to make cool aesthetic pictures, but I do think they are much better if they have some purpose behind them. So it's cool picture, but what's the, is there any purpose for it? Are you sharing any useful information? You need to have a voice behind the image, personally, I, I think. If you're sharing this flat lay with your jewellery, tell people where the jewellery's from, why you like it, or if they're new, or if they're old, if they're vintage, just something about the image that actually has a voice behind and shares some information with the person viewing the image. 
whether that's just your mum or whether that's a million people it doesn't really matter in my opinion just someone's looking at that image think about what they're going to get from that image are they just looking at it because it's cool yes but how much better if it had something behind it that's my that's my that's my opinion oh also with the this kind of fillet image idea vibe whatever um, close-ups, like I said with the close-up with my face and the bottle, also close-up with shoes, like I did the close-up of my slippers, looks super cute. Um, you can do close-up of just shoes in general, close-up of your feet, close-up of a coffee on its own, on a bed. Um, maybe you have some statues or plants in your house, you could do like a little photo photo with those. So that's everything for this video guys. Oh, no, 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 I've got one. Another good idea right now is use video. Use some like cute video snippets as well as photos. Even if it's just like a moving selfie or a moving coffee shot, like I added to my coffee post. I did some moving ones, like showing you how you make it, or I did a stirring one. Um, like a slow-mo stir of coffee, a slow-mo pour of some fizzy water. Just like something cute in video format, so it just mixes it up and keeps your feed really interesting. Um, and wait, I just had one that's just gone. Hold on one second. Outfit videos. If you've not done these before, now is your time to shine, girl. Outfit videos. So if you're usually a fashion blogger and you usually only post outfit pictures, now is the time to set up your camera and film some outfit videos. Whether it's just styling one outfit and just showing the outfit, like one thing, or styling five outfits like now is the time to do more video content i feel because at home content can get boring mixing it up with some videos winning that is it i am done that is all my tips for you i hope you found it helpful i hope you're staying safe stay at home and i'll see you in my next video bye guys peace out peace out See you next time. Bye-bye.